Okay, so um, we're back and I have put together the small digit wheel. Um, this last one is pretty ugly, but I guess that's okay, it's still functional. Anyway, the point is that I cleaned it with um, toluene, um, or here in California, industrial maintenance uh, coating thinner. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, anyway, you can see that all the digits spin very freely. And the reason that they spin very freely is that I cleaned it of all the um, disgusting, um, of all the really um, disgusting uh, co um, congealed grease. Um, and I applied sewing machine oil, which is a very lightweight oil, to pretty much every surface. Um, and everything is very smooth now. So it looks really good. So that's that thing. So the next thing is to take off, um, as we said earlier, the large digit wheel, which is not possible unless I um, remove the middle shaft. So in order to do that, um, in order to remove the middle shaft, Basically, I'm going to have to remove the taper pins, um, and we hate taper pins. Um, I have some extra things today. I have a freezing spray, and I have my heat gun. This is a slightly different heat gun with a smaller um, aperture. Um, and also what I thought I'd try is if that doesn't work, I also have a Dremel. Um, and with the Dremel, I have some bits, and in the bits, I have these, um, these, uh, not this, engraving bits. And the engraving bits, um, they're basically diamond tips, and I thought that, uh, you know, if, uh, if I can't knock the taper pins out, I can just sort of engrave inside. Um, and instead of using a, a, an enormous drill press to try to, um, to try to uh, mill the pin out, I can just use a, a Dremel and maybe just grind away at the top um, of the taper pin. So anyway, that's an idea um, that I'm going to be trying. So, but first, in order to uh, in order to remove these things, I am going to first remove these glass panels. Um, these glass panels typically get broken. Um, they're usually received from eBay broken. Here's a crack right here, and here's a crack over here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these plates. They're just held on by you know simple screws around. I'm going to remove this um, lifting knob, um, which just has basically a nut on the other side right over there. Um, and then I'm going to try to remove the taper pins. So. Um, I'm going to cut right now, um, and we'll see where we are shortly. A quick note, um, a couple of notes. So I took off this uh, face plate. It's actually two face plates, um, and there's the glass. The, um, the glass, of course, is broken, um, at least a part of it is. Um, it's pretty, pretty lightweight glass. It's, it's rather thin. Um, so I'm thinking this could probably easily be replaced, uh, even by acrylic, <laughs> although, yeah, you don't want to do that. That's not very authentic. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it could probably be easily replaced with glass. Um, here's the smaller bit. Here's the smaller one with, um, an intact piece of glass. Um, the edges of the glass are pretty cracked, but I guess it doesn't really matter because those would be hidden by the bezel. Um, I didn't take off the uh, little indicators. There wasn't really any point. So, okay. So I did that. I took off the knob and I put all the uh, little tiny screws in bag 15. Um, then I used the freezing spray and the hot air gun, 
and also a little you know piece of um, aluminum or I think this is steel um, as a kind of a heat shield to uh, try to protect the um, delicate cellulose digit wheel over here um, and then basically I heated it up once I sprayed it once I heated it up again and then I just uh, was able to knock out the um, taper pin just with this little thing and it came right out um, so that was kind of nice um, so the thing is that uh, I think it's very important to note the orientation of these pieces because um, if they get put in wrong I don't think this thing is going to work so so this uh, this part over here has this kind of a flat end over here um, and when this flat end is facing this way the um, this gear has this other uh, sort of um, non-tooth area non-toothed area um, that non-toothed area faces down so I think that's that's important to note um, the purpose of, of um, these gears over here is to rotate the digit wheel and you might be able to see if I can rotate this one digit wheel here there's this little metal piece over here and this actually when when these digit wheels rotate this way they will get stopped by these little um, things over here and when they get stopped you can see that they stop on zero um, so basically uh, what this uh, what this gear over here does is it rotates the digit wheels this way right this way um, until they get stopped so that's the zero um, so that's what happens when you rotate the central shaft so you can rotate it one way and you can rotate it the other way and when you rotate it one way only one of the gears should go and when you rotate it the other way um, the other gear should go so anyway um, that was just a quick note I am now going to attempt to remove this other taper pin um, and then basically remove the entire uh, central shaft and see what happens so I was able to remove the second uh, taper pin with um, slightly more difficulty um, it just required a few more cycles um, but it uh, came right out I just banged on it with um, this one small well larger kind of uh, tool and, and then the smaller tool and it came right out so now I'm going to pull out the shaft and we shall see what happens yeah it's coming out it is coming out very slowly it's just taking a bit of effort to pull Maybe I should get uh, some pliers. Yeah. I will definitely get some pliers. Okay. Okay, some pliers. Let's use this to maybe grab onto the end and pull, or maybe over here, or maybe this way. Okay. 
Okay. That was, of course, going to happen. I need to tighten this a little. Why are you so stuck? Probably for the same reason all these other parts are stuck, because the grease has congealed in it. So, let's uh, remove the central shaft. the central shaft. Okay, the central shaft is stuck on, on something. Yeah, okay, well, I'll leave it there. Um, yeah. Or maybe I'll remove it. Well, okay, I'll just leave it there. Uh, okay, so now we have this part. And it looks like in order to remove this part now, I'm going to have to um, unscrew this nut and it looks like that will probably loosen up all of these parts and then I can just take this and pull it out there. So here's the thing, there's, there's no way around it. Um, there must be a special tool that was used to unscrew this kind of a split flathead kind of thing. So you see over here, this is actually a set screw, and originally what I did was I aligned the set screw up so that so that the notches were um, were parallel with each other, and then I fiddled with it and you know was able to remove it. But uh, there's no question um, that this particular one was meant to be removed with a tool that's like a flathead, but it's kind of split. So. Um, and the reason that I need that is um, I took this um, thin uh, crescent wrench. It's 11 sixteenths, and that is the size of this nut over here. And when I move the nut, basically you can see that uh, the other part moves. Oops, come here. That the other part moves along with it. So you know, unless I can hold onto this part. Uh, which is really difficult with an ordinary screwdriver. Um, unless I can hold on to this part while I unscrew uh, this nut, um, I'm not going to be able to remove this part. Um, it, it is actually kind of moot at this point because you know now that the shaft is out of the way, I can probably just pull this out, um, which I think I'll probably do. Um, but you know, I may run into the same problem with uh, these nuts over here. So I really want to find the proper tool um, because it would be nice to have the right tools to uh, to remove this thing. Um, this is a little worrying. I, I really don't know why this isn't coming out um, so well. It's it's probably because the shaft is is being lifted slightly um, because uh, of the way that this piece is in the way, maybe. Um, it would be nice to take that out as well, um, just for fun, um, so that I could take this shaft out, actually. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, when I come back, um, I will probably um, have removed the large digit wheel, um, you know, hokeying up something to remove this. Um, and maybe I'll have some more information on this uh, funny tool that should um, that should be used to remove these uh, funny nut kind of a screw thing. Uh, so let's see what happens. Um, I did manage to find out um, what the bits are um, called to remove um, this sort of split flathead thing. It's called a slotted spanner nut driver. Um, they're not spanners um, because a spanner is apparently two round holes and the bits are basically two round bits. You, you, 
can't use that. You have to use um, slotted spanner. Um, the problem is that um, when I looked online, um, I don't think there actually was any standard slotted spanner that would fit this. So I guess what you would have to do is basically take a screwdriver and, well, it would have to be obviously bigger than this. Um, take a screwdriver and cut out the middle. Um, I can't really think of any other way that you would uh, do that. Um, what I did was I, um, again, I aligned the slot in the central set screw um, and then I was able to take this screwdriver and uh, rotate it. Um, that's never going to happen with this um, and there is definitely no um, slotted spanner nut driver that would fit this because of this um, big extension over here. So. I'd have to make a custom tool. But in any case, what I did was I removed the, um, the sides from the large digit wheel so that I can just remove that. Now I have a nut here and a nut here. Um, and now I have the, uh, this digit wheel. So um, we've got some more parts held on by taper pins. Um, it looks like um, the wheels were put on from this side because there is this slot which just kind of ends. So obviously removing this isn't going to do anything. I'm going to have to remove everything from this side. Um, so we've got one taper pin for this part and another taper pin for this part and then I should just be able to remove all of these digit wheels and uh, clean everything up. Um, and then after that, um, I think we will be in good shape to actually put the whole thing back together and cross our fingers and hope that um, everything's working. So, uh, I have removed this and I removed the taper pin from here. Um, this required some heat cycles and a little bit of, um, of uh, engraving a bit with um, one of the drill, um, not drill bits, the uh, engraving bits um, on the small end um, before I was able to knock it through. Uh, so there is the uh, taper pin. So um, before I continue, um, it is important to note the orientation of the parts. So here we have this flat end right over here, and that aligns with this notch on the other side. So that's important to know. So I can just remove this. All right, and I'm just going to put the taper pin with the part. Which way did it go? This way. So I'm going to put the taper pin with the part. Wow, that's some noise. I don't know what's going on. And then... And then uh, this part comes off. This is the locking. Uh, this is the locking uh, arm. Um, it can come down and go into a hole in a in an axle, which prevents it from moving. Um, again, it's important to note that there is um, a sort of washer-like protrusion on this side, um, and there's this um, little arm thing that the uh, spring was on. So it's important to note that that's the orientation. So that goes in the bag. This is bag 15. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do now is remove this part uh, with its taper pin. And um, you can see that we have um, one part that's sticking out um, and that is rounded, so that's usually the big end. Uh, luckily, the small end doesn't even stick out. Um, 
uh, it is embedded. Uh, so in fact, we should be able to remove this really quickly, really easily. So let's see if that can in fact be done. Um, so I'm going to find, I think, I think this works maybe. Yeah, I think. I think that's good. I'm just making sure that um, I can actually, that the pin can actually come out. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it can, let's see. All right, well, I'll try it and see what happens. I'll just tap at it gently. Nothing yet. Uh, let's see. Let's try that. Did that work? Mm, I don't think so. Let's see. All right, so how about here? No. All right, so what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to do, and uh, may as well do that now so you can see, I'm going to take the heat gun, and where is my heat shield? Here's my heat shield. And I'm just going to heat it up a little. Just a little bit. I don't want to heat it up so much that the heat ends up um, heating up too much of the axle. Okay. So now basically I froze it and I'm going to heat it up again. Now that I heated it up, I'm going to attempt to knock on the pin. And that's not going in. It's not working. Not yet, anyway. All right, so I'm going to freeze it again. Heat it up again. Freeze it again. Heat it up again. Well, maybe freezing a little more. And heating it up again. Absolutely sure not to get that cellulose hot. All right, let's uh, see what happens now. Hmm, it's just not coming out. All right, so if this happens, then the next thing that I do is I just take the Dremel. Take the Dremel, and what have I got? So I have um, a bit on it. This is the uh, engraving bit. It's a small one. Will it fit in here? Yeah. 
So basically what I do is I take that and I'm just going to drill a little bit into it. Just a little bit. Maybe knock on it a little bit. And that doesn't work. This one. Maybe knock on it a little more. There we go. Okay, so all that was required really, I think, is to take this one, which has a little uh, a bit of a bigger end, um, and knock on the end of the pin, um, because apparently the smaller one wasn't providing enough force. So I think that it would be really nice if I had a bunch of these in all sorts of different sizes so that I could get the exact size that went into here. And also it would be nice if this didn't um, actually taper, um, if this were straight. Um, so that would be really helpful. Um, but alas, I only have these two sizes. And the only reason why I have two sizes is that I cut off one of these. Anyway, so the taper pin is out, that's cool. Um, can I pull this out? I'm probably going to have to use the bearing puller, won't I? So let's go and grab the bearing puller. Okay, so, uh, so the reason that um, the bearing puller is misaligned is that um, these uh, ends are not symmetrical, um, which is kind of a stupid thing that I did. It's a really stupid thing that I did. Um, and I had half a mind to just um, remake these parts and then put these together and then, um, and then cut them uh, all at once, so that way they have the same exact angle. But I am not going to do that now because we are now working on something else. So see what I did on this is I just picked a bunch of reasonably large screws reasonably large screws, and then I put some holes in there and tapped it. So I can take the jaws out. I can put these back in here so I don't lose them. I just need to take these out. It's kind of hard to get in, hard to get at them. Ow. Okay. It's really hard. There we go. Yeah, I could have found a uh, an adjustable wrench, but lazy.
think. do that and then I'll I'll get the uh, the longer nose oops okay. this doesn't have to be too tight So there's that, um, and then this is way too long. So I have, I believe, I have it with me, yes. I have this longer one. So this comes out, and you put this one in, um, and then you're done. So, I'll tighten this up, tighten this end up, and pull. This is just so much easier than trying to bang on these parts to get them off. It really is. So, there we go. Okay. Loosen that up. Pull on this. All right. So, um, and here's a wheel. So uh, the wheel has um, digits 0 through 9 and then negative 1 through negative 9. So that's, um, so that's 19 positions. So it's got 19 detents. Um, and there's the detent pin right over there. So there's that. Um, and if I put this on here, that's really not too sticky. So, but then again, this was the wheel that was spinning freely. This one is also spinning fairly freely. This one too. This one, but it's this one that is not spinning at all. And this one is a little, this one's not very easy. So. Uh, let me get a, okay, so let me take this and put the taper pin into it. Let's see, does it go this way? Yeah, I think it does. Um, and then let me get another bag. Excuse me. And this is just going to be a temporary bag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these parts one and this and all of these parts out as well um, and I'm going to clean them with toluene also known as industrial maintenance uh, industrial maintenance coating thinner um, clean them up oil them put them back um, put oil in in between the uh, little parts like like right in between here um, so that the oil gets to soak into those detent holes. Um, and then put it back together again, and it should work as smoothly and as nicely as this. Then I get to put everything back together again, oiling as I go. So 
um, let's just uh, let's just um, use the magic of Final Cut Pro. So um, this is the crud that is um, what's left of the grease and or the oil. Um, whatever it is. Basically, it uh, dried out and left this um, disgusting, sticky, colored um, thing, stuff, gel. I don't even know what it is. It's like, it's almost wax at this point. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's why these absolutely had to be removed. So, the last one comes out. The very last one. If I can get this aligned properly. Oops. Get in there. Get this aligned. Okay. Screw this up to tighten it. Okay, that's tightened. Screw the main screw to pull it. This is just so effortless. Okay, let's see if I can just pull on it the rest of the way. Yep. Now, you see how much force it took me to pull that thing off. Um, when I clean this up and oil it back on, this will go on very smoothly. So, all right, so that's the last digit wheel. Um, whoops. So this is my bag for stuff to be cleaned, as well as the shaft. Um, you can see, of course, that there is this um, stop over here. That's also taper pinned in. So that's pinned in. So obviously I'm not gonna remove that and I'm not gonna remove that. Um, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Um, and then when I come back next, um, all of these will have been cleaned and put back on the shaft and I will show how nicely it rotates. And then we are actually going to get to put the machine back together uh, cleaning the parts and oiling them along the way. Um, so we have pretty much um, just about reached the halfway point. So um, it's certainly been a long haul and um, I didn't get to take apart every single piece, um, but I got to take apart most of the things. So until next time, see ya.